Apostle Paul, he says, I was under the law of Moses, but I'm no longer under the law of Moses. Now, I'm under the law of Christ. I used to be under the law of Moses, but now, uh, but I'm no longer under the law of Moses. Why? I am set free from law of Moses, which was the law of the sin and the death. I was set free by the law of Christ, which is the law of spirit of life. So this is the, the point of the uh, Paul's writing in everywhere, everywhere. Um, so under the law, I am under the law of Moses means what? I'm under the, uh, I am, I am, what that means is I have to live according to the Moses law. I have to obey the Moses law to be saved. That's what it means. Being under the law means for me to be saved, I have to keep the Moses law. Okay, so let's look at the one Bible verse here. First Corinthians uh, nine twenty. The Moses says something very funny in a way. To the Jews, I am as a Jew. To the Jews, I am as as I. I yeah. To the Jews, I became as a Jew. Is that funny? See, racially speaking, Paul is Jew. He is a Jewish. Yeah. But he says what? To the Jewish people, I became as a Jewish people. Even the what? He is born Jewish. What is he talking about? Strange, right? That means what? The Paul is actually saying, uh, I am no longer Jewish. I used to be Jewish, who was what? Under the law of Moses. If you're Jewish, you have to obey the law of Moses. If you deny the law of Moses, then you are no longer Jew. Racially. Yeah. So Paul is in fact saying what? Uh, to the Jewish people, I become like Jewish. That means I am no longer Jewish. That means what? I am no longer obeying law of Moses. What he used to what? Obeyed law of Moses. Why did, did he obey the Moses law? Because he thought, he believed that uh, uh, he could, it is possible for him to be able to obey the law of Moses. He did not really know that he cannot obey the law of Moses, right? So he always thought, yes, the law of Moses, I have to keep it, you know, perfectly. I have to obey. There's so many people think that way because they really did not realize yet that I can 
not obey the law of Moses. What to obey? Uh, what the law of Moses says? Yeah. Love your neighbor as yeah. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Wow. No one can do that. But Horace thought, okay. Mm -hmm. It was what? It was. Uh, uh, it was uh, pretentious. It was not possible. Now, <clears throat> okay, so to the Jews, I become as a Jew in order to win Jews. The reason why I, I behave like uh, Jewish people still, uh, the reason why I do that, even though I no longer am under the law of Moses, I behave like I'm still what? I'm still obeying Moses' law. I'm still under the law of Moses. That's the way I, I actually act. I behave even though in my heart, I don't obey Moses' law anymore. Uh, why, why Paul says I, I don't obey Moses' law? Because I found out it's impossible to obey the Moses' law. Not because I don't like the Moses' law. It's just, I discovered that I cannot. Finally, uh, Paul had what? Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit opened up his eyes and he was shocked. My goodness, I cannot obey Moses' law. So he became what? Spiritually honest, finally. Okay? Now, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. Uh, the reason why I act that way to the Jewish people who's still under Moses' law is I, because I want them, I want to teach them about wonderful gospel of Jesus. It is, there's a much better law than law of Moses, which is what? Law of Christ. Okay. So it says that, Paul says, to those under the law, to those under the law means what? Jews, Jewish people. To those under the law, I became as one under the law. Okay. Now you got that right. Though, not being myself under the law. I'm not under the law anymore. That's what Paul says, that I might win those under the law. Okay, why? Why Paul do that? To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law. I'm, I'm actually not being without the law toward God, but I am now what? Under the law of Christ, I have much better law. That's what it really means that in Roman chapter eight, verse two, the law of spirit of life set me free from the what? Set me free from the law of spirit of life, which is in Christ. Set me free from the law of sin and death, which means the law of Moses. Okay. Uh, I wish you remember that uh, in the Bible, in the book of Galatians, 
for all who rely on the works of law are under the under curse. Law is curse for us. So that's why uh, in verse 13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. The curse of the law means what? Uh, law is the what? Pointing out our sin, and then law says what? You're going to die. You have to die. That's the law of Moses. So that's why in Second Corinthians chapter three, Paul says, and here Paul says, "Who has made us a competent to be minister of new covenant? New covenant means law of Christ, right?" Not in a written code. The written code means the law of Moses. But in the spirit. Uh, the new covenant is in the spirit. The written code, the letter, some says, letter, written code kills. But spirit gives, Holy Spirit gives life. So Paul is talking about this is the law of spirit of life, right? So the written code means, uh, the signifies the law of Moses, which is a curse. Now that's why at Romans chapter 5, 20, law came in to do what? To increase sin, but where the sin increased, grace abound much more. So Moses' law entered into our life to what? To increase the sin. Wow! I th I used to believe that I could obey the law of Moses. Now, oh, -oh. I now found. I cannot obey the Moses law. That's why Romans, uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 20, for no human being will be justified in his sight by works of the law, since through the law comes the knowledge of the sin. Oh, do not, thou shalt not covet. Oh, coveting is sin. Oh, my goodness, how can I not coveting anything? <laughs> and this is my normal human nature. Oh, this is sinful nature. Wow. So, my human nature itself is sin. So, okay, let's go back now. <clears throat> As Paul says now, uh, I'm not under the Moses law, but the, I am under the what? Whose law? Law of Christ. Okay. So uh, let me show you the very interesting story in, in the act here. Mm. Let's go to act. Act. Chapter 21, verse 21. Okay. Very interesting story indeed. Paul now visiting Jerusalem. Uh, visiting who? The Jewish people who used to be under the law of Moses. Right, but there. So he is having meeting with them, and then there's a lot many Jewish people who accepted Jesus, but still keeping the law of Moses. Okay, then uh, there's uh, then some one of the leader is telling Paul who is now came to visit. The Jerusalem, 
and the person, uh, uh, the, that person is uh, uh, telling uh, Paul. And the person says to Paul, you know what? There are many Jews in this Jerusalem, but uh, they, they have been told. Many people are telling them that the Jewish people who just accepted Jesus, the gospel of Jesus, and then, uh, uh, then that person says to uh, uh, to the many other people who accepted, you know, as a Jew, they accepted Jesus, and the telling them, you know what Paul is doing in all other uh, Gentile countries. Paul is telling them this, and they have been told about you, that you teach, Paul, you are teaching all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses. To forsake Moses. Uh, uh, and telling them not to circumcise their children and observe the customs means observe the Moses law. So that means what? Paul was teaching the Gentile Jewish people, uh, Jewish people still living in Gentile countries and <coughs> Hmm. Hmm. Forget about Moses, okay? Don't follow Moses anymore. And 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 what next? Paul is teaching them no no, no more circumcision. Okay. And then follow the Moses law. Observe the custom. Hmm. Ah, uh, this is a headache. A big headache. Why? Because the Jewish people living in Jerusalem is when they are hearing this, do you know what their response was? Really? How can he do that? Oh, you know, we still have to obey the Moses law. We still have to give a, a circumcision to our children. Then how can he teach? Why he can? He is teaching them not to obey Moses law anymore and don't do the circumcision. Wow. We cannot agree with Paul. So. The Christian uh, Jews, uh, uh, Christian Jews are having big headache. It's confusion, right? Mm. Paul is doing what? No, no, we cannot obey Moses anymore. But now we can follow what? Law of Christ. Okay? And, uh, uh, just having circumcision on the body alone doesn't mean anything. The Christ will send the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit will give us what? Circumcision of our heart. That's what Paul is teaching. But the Jewish people are hearing uh, uh, false news in Korean, Katya news. <laughs> So, so, what then is to be done? Ah, kolcha puta imari. This is problem, you know. Uh, uh, they will certainly hear. They will certainly hear that you have come. Uh, you Paul, Apostle Paul. Uh, they will certainly hear 
uh, that you are here in Jerusalem now. And then, uh, I'm afraid that they come to you and what? Protest. Why are you telling them, you know, teaching them, uh, the other Jews in the Gentile country, not to uh, obey the Moses law? Even circumcision. You're telling them not to do circumcision. You are what? You are against the law? You don't have any more laws anymore? It's a headache. So, then this person uh, got the new idea. This, do, therefore, mm, do. Let's do this, therefore. What we tell you, uh, uh, we will tell you that what to do, not to have uh, this big headache. Okay? Big confusion. Uh, we have uh, four men who are under a ball. Wow. Uh, there's uh, four new men, uh, uh, new church member, who just made up their mind uh, to be a Christian. Okay. So, Take these four men, these men, and purify yourself among them and pay their expenses. Jewish people, according to the Moses law, they have to be what? Be purified to follow the Moses law. So uh, they're telling uh, Paul that, okay, right now we have four new, uh, new believers, uh, and that they are what? They have to go through uh, some kind of purification uh, ceremony, and Paul, you also uh, uh, come and uh, become one of those what? Uh, those, so, or five. So Paul is actually, it was told to do that way, and who paid their expenses? Telling them, Paul, why don't you pay for them? Why? So that, listen to this, very interesting, so that they may shave their heads, I'm a, oh, the purification process is what? Including shaving their hair. Okay. Uh, this requires some money for the barber, right? Yeah. And if you do that, uh, even what? Yourself pay for them, the shaving. That's or everybody will know that there is nothing in what they have been told about you, that uh, you yourself live in. Uh, 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 so this means uh, there is nothing in that they have been told about you. Uh, then people will think, uh, that was not true. Paul was actually still following the law of Moses. Well, this is what? This is a pretension. This is an act and trying to make those Jewish people who still think what? We have to have a, a circumcision done. We, have, we still have to follow the Moses law. Right? And so let's pretend we still obey the law of Moses. So guess what Paul did? He did it. So this is what it means. To the Jews, I become like a Jew. Even though I'm no longer Jew. To those people still under the law of Moses, I become 
as one who is still under the law of Moses. I can pretend. What, what is the purpose? Purpose to save, to teach them the wonderful gospel of Jesus Christ. So at the beginning, let, let us pretend that we, we do that. We, we still believe in, uh, we still follow the law of Moses. See, this is, why? For the purpose of, uh, uh, you know, teaching people, uh, the new gospel, you know, we can be anything, we can do anything, whatever, and we can, uh, teach them first, then let them, what? Receive the Holy Spirit, and then as they study Bible more and more, then they will eventually find out what? Aha! We don't need to love Moses anymore. Aha! Oh, we cannot keep the law of Moses. So people believe, wow, we cannot keep Moses' law. So that's why, as I showed you before, uh, in the uh, Acts chapter 15, uh, it says what? 15, Acts 15, 10. Now therefore, why do you make a trial of God by putting a what? Yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear. We could not even, even our ancestors could not really follow the law of Moses. Why? How can we tell them to obey the Moses law? It's a yoke uh, of the Moses. So, uh, so now we go back and then continue on. Okay. Here, uh, Paul is saying, uh, I am set free the law, which I used to believe I could obey. Now, I realize it is impossible for me to obey. So that's why, uh, uh, that's why I am set free from the law of Moses to the law of Christ, which is the law of spirit. Of life, okay. And so let's uh, look at uh, 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 a circumcision here again a little bit in detail. Uh, chapter uh, Genesis chapter uh, seventeen verse ten. This is God says to Abraham, "This is my covenant." So God is giving, telling Abraham to be circumcised. And then God says, this is my promise, my covenant, okay? This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you, and your descendants, your children, after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised. And verse 11 says, and you shall be circumcised in the body or your foreskin, and it shall be a sign. Sign. Sign means a symbol. Okay. The circumcision, the cutting the foreskin, uh, is simply what? S sign. A symbol. Symbol of my promise. God's promise. So, what is God is promising? I will, I will give you Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will circumcise your heart. So you will be what? Born again. That was the content of the uh, promise God is giving Abraham through the uh, symbolic action of what? The 
circumcision on the body. So circumcision on the body is simply a symbol that the God is promising what uh, Holy Spirit and make you born again. That's a circumcision of spirit on our heart. Okay. <clears throat> so this is a sign. Circumcision is a sign of the covenant. Now. If circumcision uh, it seems to be the most important law among Moses' law, why? Why I can say that is because circumcision symbolizes what is a promise of what born again. I will give you Holy Spirit and I'll make you born again. That is the most important promise of God. If God does not give us Holy Spirit, we cannot be born again. If you are not born again, you're still keeping the law. Does it mean anything? No, it doesn't mean anything. Being born again is the most important thing for whole human being. Okay. So that's why I, I really feel that uh, uh, the law of circumcision was the most important law among Jews. And because of this, because of the importance of the law of circumcision, uh, Jewish people did the circumcision even on the Sabbath day. Sabbath day, you're not supposed to do any work, but as far as circumcision goes, you must do, even though that day was what? Sabbath day. Yeah. So, I, I, I feel that uh, Sabbath, uh, the circum law of circumcision is what? Higher priority law than Sabbath law. Then what is then Sabbath? Is Sabbath law still is like uh, circumcision law, a covenant and the symbol? Yes, you can see in the Exodus chapter thirty-one, mm, uh, verse fifteen and sixteen and seventeen. We can see that uh, work. Work shall be done for six days, but seven say the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day, any work, any work on Sabbath day, shall surely be what? Put to death. <laughs> you'll be, you'll die. So, it is. The Sabbath is what? A sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days, Lord made the heavens and earth, and seventh day, he rested, and so on. So it is indeed what? Sabbath day, Sabbath uh, law is also a covenant. And at the same time, it is what? So, uh, it is a sign. Sign. Sabbath symbolize what? I will give you rest. I will give you rest. You cannot rest yourself. Why? Because of sin. As long as we are sinner. We cannot have rest. The true rest in our heart, in our spirit, only become possible when God take our sin away. Right? So, it means the same thing. If you finally begin to believe that the Jesus saved you, Jesus Take away all those sins, and then uh, you'll finally have rest in your 
mind. But the Moses Sabbath, the symbol that is a symbol of the rest God will give a person who believe in Jesus, salvation, right? Uh, but Moses, the symbol is that a day which you do no work, just what? Just rest. If you don't rest, you die. <laughs> okay, that's Moses' service. It's a rest of the what? Body, but the service of the Jesus is what? I will give you rest. That's the rest of the what? Heart, rest in the spirit. It's a it's a spiritual rest. Just like us, uh, circumcision is what? Moses' circumcision is circumcision of the body. But the circumcision of Jesus is what? The uh, circumcision of heart, that means being born again. See? So, the, the basically same, same promise. Okay. <clears throat> but uh, still, uh, love circumcision is is a higher priority symbol because it symbolizes what Be the most important thing have to happen to us is what born again by Holy Spirit. The priority number one, the most important promise. Okay. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> now, for through the Spirit, by faith, we eagerly wait for uh, the hope of righteousness. It's no longer the law. I, Paul says, I used to uh, keeping the law of Moses so hard uh, to become righteous person. But now, no longer I'm that way, under the Moses law. I'm what? Through the what? Through the Spirit. Yeah. Holy Spirit is much more important than law. Okay. For in Christ Jesus, neither Circumcision nor un uh, uncircumcision counts for anything. Yeah. What it means is, as I said to you, ah, ah, the more the circumcision on the body, it should no longer use, no longer mean anything, as long as you what you received Holy Spirit and you are now born again. Why do you have to do follow the Moses law anymore? So that means we cannot keep Moses law because Moses law of uh, being born again, no Moses law of what rest. Hmm. That all meant what the God's promise. It was all covenant. It was all symbols. I will do it for you. So we cannot do, we cannot follow what? Moses' law. Only thing we can do is what? We finally discover by the Holy Spirit, all, all the Moses' law was the what? Promise and the symbol. Even uh, circumcision and even Sabbath law. So all we can do is what? Accept the promise and believe that God will certainly keep that promise. That means what? The death of Jesus on the cross. That's what God kept the promise that he gave promise, gave through the what? law of Moses. So law of Moses is not really okay. If you do this, if you obey this, okay, I will save you. It's not that. 
So, for in Christ Jesus, as long as we are now in Christ Jesus, because we are now born again by Holy Spirit, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision uh, counts anything. It's no value anymore. Okay. The only thing that counts is a faith working through love. Yes. Uh, now I have a faith because God loves me, even though what I cannot keep Moses' law. In the Roman chapter 2, 20, uh, 29, a man is a Jew if he is one inwardly. And the circumcision is a circumcision of heart. Circumcision of heart. By the Holy Spirit. Not by the written code. Not by the written code means in the law of Moses. Just because you had circumcision done, does that mean that you are born again? Oh, uh oh, -uh. you have to receive the Holy Spirit. That's the real circumcision. That's the circumcision of the Christ. Now you see, the circumcision of Christ appears in this Colossian chapter 2, verse 11. In him, in Jesus Christ, right? You are also circumcised with the circumcision made without hand. Without hand? By putting off the body of sins of the flesh, the circumcision of Christ. Circumcision made without hand means what? Circumcision done by the Holy Spirit. That's the way uh, you are having promised that you are going to be what? Uh, uh, putting off, putting off the body of sin. That means what? We will be resurrecting as a new creation, which is equal to the angels, right? So, Paul says, bear one another's burden. Uh, this means love one another, that it means. And fulfill. So, fulfill the law of Christ. So, if you love one another, you are fulfilling the law of Christ. Not by the obeying the law of Moses. Right? Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9.21, I am now what? Under the law of Christ, right? Not anymore under the law of Moses. So, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but the only thing really important is what? Becoming a new creation. New creation. So, we go back to the beginning, very beginning, says what? Paul says, I was under the law of Moses. I thought, I, I believed that I could obey the Moses law. And then Holy Spirit came to me. Oh, oh uh, I discovered that what? I cannot obey the Moses law. So, I am no longer... Uh, under the Moses law. Why? Because I cannot obey. Yeah. Now I am under the law of Christ because uh, law of Christ, which is the law of the spirit and life, set me free from the law of sin and death, which is law of the Moses. Thank you, Jesus.